morning. I'm happy to greet you all as the church gathers to worship in this place. Uh, there are announcements, which I assume you have printed on your program, but I would say to you all that you may, once you're seated in your little one place, you may remove your masks and leave them off until time to come up to receive communion and then put them back on. And Lisa assures me that if she sees anyone that's forgotten, she will remind you. We love that about Lisa. And uh, thanks for coming on this uh, brisk day. Uh, it's a little brisker than we might have wished, but think how we'll think back in longing for it uh, one of these days when things heat up. Let's begin uh, our uh, uh, time together by saying together our hospitality blessing. Holy Spirit, living within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship with us at St. Albans. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual set by you who will enrich our lives. And most of all, oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The worship begins with the singing of hymn 182. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Let us say together the Pascha Nostrum. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith 
that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns in you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter saw the man who had been lame from birth walking, he addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abram, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and, and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold to all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial reading appointed for today is Psalm 4. We will pray this responsibly by whole verse. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run at the false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first epistle of John. So see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do you do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, and you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. It seems to me rather prescient uh, that the opening sentence of my sermon says, one of the things people sometimes ask each other just for the heck of it is what is your favorite season of the year? As depends on whether or not you know what season it is. I'm not sure why, I guess it's just one of those conversation starters that come in handy when all else fails. My own answer, if asked, depends on the time of year the question gets asked. Along about the middle of August, as I dread leaving my own personal igloo to take my dog Freddie for a walk along the sizzling sidewalks, my favorite season is the fall with its crisper air, its shorter days, and its football games. Anything that breaks the iron grip of relentless sun and melting asphalt is high on my list of seasons. But nature, whose frigid blow on Ash Wednesday left us humbled by our own vulnerability, 
has repented her frozen ways and once more has blessed us with spring. Tiny shoots of new life have made their way through the once frozen earth and tender new leaves have woven their verdant canopies over the gnarled branches below. The birds are tweeting their heads off with joy and baby turtles tag along behind their mothers to explore the neighborhood ponds ecosystem. And the IRS is giving us an extra month to file our taxes. So what's not to love about spring? It takes me back to another spring long, long ago. I was sitting out on the new deck the men's group had built at the rectory in LaGrange where I lived, enjoying a little post Holy Week, post Easter respite. I'd done all the fertilizing and repotting of plants I was a mind to do. I'd sat down and polished off the book I was reading and was polishing off a glass of Texas red as well. The hummingbirds were swarming around the feeders presenting for my entertainment the wonderful contrast between their beautiful plumage and graceful flight and their aggressive territorialism and atrocious manners. I sat with a dog in my lap as the day settled into its gentle end and lightning bugs replaced the hummingbirds with their flickering calls to one another. Here I am, follow me. All was peaceful, all was serene. Life was good. And then from somewhere in my psyche, from that mortal core that taints even our most joyful moments, the thought arose unbidden. Someday I won't be here. Someday I will be dead. Someday I'll be just one more bag of bones, one more anonymous carcass, one more of the great majority who have passed this way and been left behind, forgotten in the great rush of time. Someday, as incredible as it seems, the world will have to get along without me. And if the truth be known, not only will it not cease to spin on its axis, it will not even miss a beat. And how could this possibly be? We are in the season in which it is safe to talk about death. We Easter people have been reminded once more of our eternal hope, and we have thumbed our noses at the grim reaper. The empty tomb has called us once more into remembrance that a place has been prepared for us. Historians would probably agree that Christianity's tipping point, the thing that gave it the kickstart that propelled it from a small Jewish sect into a worldwide religion was the emperor, Roman emperor Constantine's dream on the eve of battle. A dream in which he saw a vision of the cross of Christ emblazoned with a motto, in this sign, you will conquer. Constantine's successful defeat, defeat of his enemies at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge in the year 313 led to the Edict of Milan, which ended the persecution of Christians. And from there, it was only a decade until Christianity became the state religion of the Roman Empire. These are the facts, but the heart of Christianity's phenomenal growth was not political power, but the power of the resurrection. Constantine <clears throat> made Christianity legitimate. The, resurrec the resurrection made it invincible. Christianity offered something the world hungered to hear, the good news that death was not the end of the story, that what God had done in and through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ had turned the tables on the enemy. For it, as in Adam, all die goes our song. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 
when death's specter blights the serenity of evening and the beauty of nature, when visions of our own demise haunt our dreams and stunt our purpose, laying its pall over the living, the sense of God's presence gives us courage in the face of our own mortality. The conviction that whatever life brings, whatever death entails, we are safe with a God who will not let us go. A few mornings after my evening on the deck, I went out to water the plants and left the back door open. When I came back in, I heard an insistent buzzing and discovered to my great dismay a terrified hummingbird beating its wings against a window. Frantic to find its way out again into the garden, its anxiety, great as it was, could not have, not have been any greater than mine to set the little creature free before it batted itself to death against the glass. Fortunately, luck was with me. I managed to corner it again against the window with a broom and reached round behind and caught it, actually held in my hand its tiny body, all tuckered out with restless beating, resigned, it seemed, to whatever might be its fate. Its life was in my hand. There are those who claim we humans are the only species who have a sense of our own mortality. We are the only ones who have an existential awareness of the meaning of death. All other species, goes the thinking, operate only on survival. They are wired for self-preservation, but they do not meditate on their own mortality. But as that little bird lay in my hand, its eyes closed, its head laid against its breast, no longer struggling to escape. I cannot but think that it believed in its little bird brain that this was the end. So when I carried it to the door and opened my hand, the hand of certain death, and it soared once more into the bright morning, a tiny flicker of faith must have offered up a prayer of thanksgiving to the one whose dream for it was life, who had released it from the power of death, and who called it once again into the light. Let us stand and affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found on page five of your service bulletin. 
let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will to them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins with the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we come to repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Are there any birthdays or uh, wedding anniversaries or baptismal anniversaries to be celebrated this morning? We come forward. No takers? All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Oh, praise him, hallelujah. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true pastoral lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sins of the world. By his death, he has destroyed them. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And let the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. 
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on them in your hearts by faith. With thanksgiving. Body of 
body is part. Body is part. Body is part. Body is part. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, love without end. Amen. The God of peace is brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, let us go forth in the name of Christ.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.